this tutorial I'm going to show you how to easily make procedurally generated realistic landscapes in Blender. The first thing you want to do is go to the description and grab the link that I have to where to download this add-on. Okay, once you're in Blender and you have the add-on downloaded, you can go to Edit, Preferences, head over to the Add-ons tab, and then under Install, you can uh, go to the file where the add-on was downloaded. So my just in my download folder is called TXA and don't unzip it because that's how you actually install it. So once you find your folder, install the add-on and for me, I already have it installed, but what you'll see is you'll see you'll see this, you just gotta do the check mark I like to save it, save preferences, I close it out and then if you click shift A to add a object you can go to mesh and you now see TXA landscape. So this looks very similar to the ant landscape, and that's because it's made by the same guy. And it essentially is the same thing as the ant landscapes, just with the added procedural textures. So if you're really comfortable with ant landscapes, you'll find this really easy. So the first thing you can do once you add this is go under the presets, and you'll see all the presets here. So some good ones I like to use are canyons. Uh, this just gives you a bunch of canyons. It's kind of like a Grand Canyon look. Some other good ones are mountains. It just gives you a really big mountain. Good one is the river, and this would be good just for like one shot where you just have, need a river in the middle of your scene. And some other ones like volcano looks really good, and something like dune. It's also really good. And these are also the same exact presets that are in the normal ant landscape add-on. Okay, and once you have the terrain that you like, I'm going to choose canyons. Let me start playing around with the settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is modify the texture size. So I'm going to keep mine at 512 just so things run smoothly, but when I actually make my landscapes, I like to put them at 1024 by 1024, and this just gives it really high res, and you can see a lot of detail in the terrain. And some other things you can do is mess with the mesh size. You'll see that there is actually more canyons, and it just expands the mesh. Some other things you can do is mess with the noise type and noise basis. But if you use the presets up here, it's already uh, set to what it should be for the type of terrain you want. So I wouldn't mess with that. But one thing you can mess with is the random seed. So you can just move this number up, and once it regenerates, it'll give you a fully random uh, terrain that's based on the preset you had above. So as you can see, it's just another canyon. And if I do it again, you'll see it's just another random canyon. So I usually don't like to mess with these. I think the default settings are actually really good. So I usually keep things like this. Okay, and once you have a mesh that you like, uh, you'll notice even that we turn, even though we turn the text resolution up, it looks pretty low res still. So if you go to the modifier tab, uh, you'll see that there's an ant subsurface modifier, and that's only at seven. So what we can do to boost the resolution is bring it up to something like 11. And once that loads in, you'll be able to see the extra resolution. You can now see that there's a ton more detail in our model. And I'm also going to bring the render resolution up to 11. Actually, 11 might be too much. Uh, I think 10 is good. Okay, and once we have uh, some resolution, we can start adding our shaders. So if you click on your landscape and then go, you can click N to bring up this menu and go down to the bottom and see TXA landscape you'll notice that it brings you to the eroder parameters and there is a bunch of parameters here that mess with every little detail about the erosion but I'm not gonna mess with that because personally I really like what uh, the eroder does on the default settings it's pretty good and you'll notice that it usually does what you want it to do but if you did want to mess with that you can mess with the rain amount to turn down a bit of like the gullies and valleys that form and also the river iterations, you can turn that down. But what we're really wanting to do is add our materials. So I'm going to go through each one of the materials. And this material, currently there's only four. I don't know if there's any plans to add any more. But these ones usually fit pretty good. The first one I'm going to test out is the Alpine. I'll show you how that looks. Okay, so since this is the first time using our rotor, you'll see that there's now a erosion in our mesh. But if we want to see the shading, we can go to the shading tab. But first I'm going to change my render engine to cycles just because cycles is nicer in every single way. And now you can see our alpine texture. So this is really nice. This is again a procedural shader that is put on your mesh where it basically just adds snow to the flat parts and then adds a cliff to the steep parts. 
So that's the alpine. Now I'll show you the desert, which is the one that is kind of meant to go with the canyons. So this is the desert, but it looks like this. It works really well for canyons and stuff. And actually what you can do is you can go into the shading tab and go to the mesa, click this little button, and actually change the color of the different canyons. So like if you wanted a more orange color, you could do that. And that's one of the nice things about having a procedural texture is you can change any aspect of what the material looks like just by playing with these different components of the shader. It's really nice. And so I'll show you what that looks in the rendered tab. I think that looks a lot better. And this is the forested shader. But it's good just as ground cover as long as you use different assets like trees to kind of cover up. But uh, just like the desert shader, you can also go to the shading tab and mess with like every part of it. So you can mess with the marshes, which is like the little darker splotches. You can mess with the cliffs, which is these light green splotches. The snow, which is if we had a higher mesh, which it would actually add snow. But uh, you can mess with all these settings and get a completely different look for a shader. And then the last material is the volcano material. And this is the volcano shader. It's a really cool novelty shader that you can use. I don't know, just looks really cool how like there's the lava streams and stuff. Okay, and that's the end of the tutorial. If you enjoyed, uh, make sure to subscribe and um, also make sure to follow Nurk987. I don't know if that's his YouTube name, but I know it's his GitHub name. He does a ton of things for Blender. He's made a ton of add-ons. Make sure to follow him. And uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.